I love robots. But that's not what tonight's about. You would think, I mean, drinking coffee out of a robot mug would be the perfect segue into a robot illustrator tutorial. It's coming. I'm just not there yet. I'm not done, so I don't want to release it until I'm actually happy with what I've made. So welcome to or welcome back to the studio. If this is your first time here, I'd like to welcome you. This week we're gonna look at the selection tools inside of Adobe Illustrator. We have three different selection tools that we're gonna talk about. Now I know what you're thinking, or maybe thinking. Why do I need to know about the selection tools? There are so many better tools you could have picked, Mike. I get it, but without these selection tools, a lot of what we do in Illustrator just wouldn't be possible. All right, before we hop into Illustrator, three really quick things. Number one, if this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell, that way you get notified every time I upload a new video. Number two, if you're enjoying these tutorials and you're actually picking something up, I'd love to have your support over on my Patreon account. Support starts at a dollar a month, just buys me a coffee. Number three, stick around to the end. Hopefully you make it through the next two minutes of the video. You can skip ahead if you want, but you might learn something. So we're starting off with the selection tool, which is the black arrow. Keyboard shortcut for this is the letter V. With the selection tool, I can select single objects by clicking on them. I can also drag around multiple objects to select all of them. I can select groups of objects, or if I hold down shift, I can select one or more objects. This tool is also used for scaling and rotating. You see these little bounding box come up when I select this shape. If I hover over a corner or another one of these on the side, I can scale this box in. I can scale it up. If I hold down shift while scaling, I'm going to scale proportionately. And if I hold down shift and alt, I can scale proportionately into the center or away from the center. My direct selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut A, the little white arrow. This is normally used for selecting single anchor points. For example, if I wanted to change this circle and I just wanted to move this one anchor point, I can click on it. And if I hold shift, I can scale straight up from there and get kind of an egg shape. Or if I wanted to, I could highlight that one and change this or convert it over to a square point and get that water drop. Lastly, the group selection tool, which can be found under the direct selection tool, is used for selecting items inside of a group of objects. So if I go back and hit V here, gives me my selection tool, this gives me the whole shape, the whole group gets selected. But let's say I wanted to change just the background on this wasp. Well, I can double click into it with the selection tool, but that's not the easiest way to do it. If I go to my group selection tool, I can click on the background, double click on my color swatch, change to the color that I want, hit OK, and now all I've done is just done that, but it's still a full group. All right, that wasn't so bad. Again, you've got your direct selection tool, you've got your selection tool, and then you've got the group selection tool. All have a different purpose, all work in a little bit different way. How are you gonna work these into your workflow? Now, at the beginning of the video, I talked about a little bit of special information. I don't know if you're a follower of mine on Instagram, but if you're not, I released this piece of art a little while ago. It's just one of my monoline pieces. I'm actually working on a whole series of these. I have another one hopefully coming out in the next week or two that I've got the sketching done for. I just haven't done the line work for it yet. I'm gonna give away three eight and a half by 11 numbered signed prints of this piece. You can't pick these up anywhere. I don't sell them on my website. I don't sell them anywhere else. You can get prints of it, but they're not numbered, they're not signed. Uh, and they cost a whole whack of money over on like Redbubble or Society6. So here's how you enter. If you wanna be entered for the giveaway, just go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you like about either the art piece or what you liked about this video. That's it. I'll select three comments from below. I'll use one of those automatic comment pickers and we'll go ahead and I'll get these mailed out to you guys. All right, designers, that's it for this week. I gotta get back to work now, so get out there and design something.